Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we are going to be going through all of my pet snakes because I have gotten a lot of snakes over the past year, and a lot of people have been asking me to do a video where I just show all of them so you guys can keep up with all the snakes that I have. But before we get into that, I want to give a huge thanks to Amino for sponsoring today's video. Amino is a really cool app that you can download on iOS or Android by following the link down below, or you can search for Amino in your app store and you can download the app. It's a really cool app that has a ton of different communities based on whatever different interests you may have are. And I am a part of the reptile community on Amino and I highly encourage you guys to check it out. It's a really awesome place where you can connect with a ton of different people who are interested in reptiles and you can learn a lot of useful information about all different types of reptiles and in general just share your love for reptiles. On the Reptile Amino there are chat rooms, you can post polls, post pictures of your reptiles, and it's a really big community so it's a lot of fun. I'm part of the community and I actually just recently posted a poll that you guys can take part in. By going to the Reptile Amino and searching for my username which is Tyler Ruggy. I posted a poll asking what everyone thinks is the best snake for beginners because there are a ton of different snakes out there that you can keep as pets and I was really interested to know what everyone else thought was the best beginner snake because there's a lot of different conflicting opinions about that. So if you guys want to take part in that poll and let me know what you think then make sure to join the Reptile Amino and again search for my profile it is Tyler Ruggy. So again, a huge thanks to Amino for sponsoring today's video, and let's get straight into the video. Let's introduce all of my pet snakes, because I have a lot of them, and they're so cute, and they're amazing. If you guys don't like snakes, I don't know what you're doing here, but I highly encourage you to stick through the video, because I think that uh, seeing some of my snakes might help you get over your fear. All of my snakes are really nice, and they're really pretty, really cute. So let's just get straight into it. I'm gonna start out with my smallest snakes and we're gonna work our way up to the larger ones. So the first snake I gotta get out is my corn snake. So this is my corn snake. His name is Sprinkles and he is a palmetto corn snake. Palmetto corn snakes are snakes that are mostly all white but they have this really pretty speckling on them. Sprinkles is a special one because he has really bulgy eyes and bulgy eyes are not desirable for breeders who are breeding snakes because it's considered a defect even though it doesn't actually affect them health-wise. It's just a physical defect so when you're breeding snakes you don't want to like be breeding snakes that have defects. So I decided to buy Sprinkles just a couple months ago at NARBC Tinley Park and I do not breed my snakes so I just decided to buy this snake with the defect not only because it was cheaper with the defect and also I thought it was a lot cuter than the regular ones but Obviously also you don't want someone to buy a snake that has a physical defect and to breed it with other snakes because that will just cause more snakes to come out with defects. And if you guys want to see more of Sprinkles, I actually just did a video pretty recently introducing him and I kind of went more in depth about palmetto corn snakes and all about Sprinkles. So if you guys want to check that out, he's literally like my cutest snake, in my opinion. Um, I guess who am I to say what my cutest snake is? They're all pretty freaking cute. But yeah, again, if you want to see Sprinkles more in detail, I did a video about that, so I will link it up in the cards over here, and you guys can check that out, because he is a really unique, pretty corn snake, and I love him a lot. So say goodbye to Sprinkles, we're going to move on to the next snake. Alright, so next up, this is Gucci, and Gucci is my tri-colored hognose. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with hognose snakes, they're pretty common in the pet trade now. But a lot of the times when you see hog noses, I think the most common one is a western hog nose. And western hog nose and tricolored hog nose are not the same. Western hog nose snakes do come in different morphs and different colors. But western hog nose snakes are actually native to North America, whereas tricolored hog nose are native to South America. And this is actually important because there are slight differences in their care. But Tricolored hognoses are also not known to live as long. I think the longest living ones have been around eight years old, whereas Western hognoses live almost twice as long as that. So tricolored hognose is not a morph of Western hognose. They are their own type of hognose snake. So yeah, they are a very, very pretty snake. And also another thing to take note of that's really interesting is hognose snakes are actually venomous. This is the only type of venomous snake that I have. 
but don't worry, the venom, if it bites you, will not really do any harm to you at all. It only will affect smaller rodents. So this is what separates the hognose from all the other snakes I have because my other snakes are constrictors and they kill their prey by constricting them. But the hognose just kind of bites the prey and waits for them to stop moving and then swallows them. So... They're really, really pretty cute snakes. Gucci is just a baby. She has grown a lot since I first got her, but she will get to be about two feet long, so she does have a little bit of growing to do. So yeah, that is Gucci, my tricolored hognose. She is a very cute noodle. Would you look at that quality noodle? So next we have Egret, who is my Coastal Jaguar Carpet Python, and I'm not going to be taking her out for this video, but I will show you some clips of her in her enclosure. And the reason for that is because she does have a neurological issue, and neurological issues are actually common amongst certain morphs of snakes, like for example, spider ball pythons are a snake that are just notorious for having neurological issues, and a lot of people consider it to be... Uh, inhumane, I guess you could say, or just kind of... People frown upon breeding snakes that are morphs that commonly have neurological problems because it's just not really fair to the snakes because obviously the neurological issues aren't going to give it the best quality of life. So I wouldn't personally recommend going out and getting morphs that are usually neurological... Neurological? Simply neurological. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting snakes that have neurological issues, typically, because you don't want to promote people who are breeding these kinds of snakes. I got Egret from someone who couldn't keep her any longer and rehomed her to me, so I didn't actually get her from a breeder, she was rehomed to me. But Egret, so far, has been living a fairly good life. She moves around her enclosure fine, she strikes and eats her prey without an issue. The only time I really see her showing signs of her neurological issue is when I take her out to handle her because that's when she kind of starts to thrust her head around and she kind of flips over a little bit and uh, she just struggles a lot when I take her out of her enclosure so I don't do it very often at all obviously only when I'm cleaning her enclosure and stuff but yeah Overall, I feel like her neurological issue isn't super severe. It can get worse over time. Egret is in a vertical enclosure because she is an arboreal snake. She likes to be up high in her enclosure, so I have a lot of vines and foliage for her to hide in. But again, she's really a nice snake. She doesn't bite or anything like that. I just don't like to handle her because she gets really, really stressed out. Anyways, that is Egret, and let's move on to my next snake. So next we have one of my ball pythons. This is Tesla, and Tesla is a VPI Lesser Exanthic ball python. So that is her morph. There are normal ball pythons that just look like a regular generic snake, but ball pythons come in a huge variety of different patterns and colors, and those are kind of described as being different morphs. So her morph is a VPI Lesser Exanthic and that just makes her colors a lot lighter, and she kind of looks almost gray or tan colored. I named him Tesla for a couple of reasons. The first reason being, well, the first reason being I want a Tesla. I can't afford a Tesla because I keep buying snakes, so I decided to just name one of them Tesla, and just, I'm gonna live vicariously through the snake and pretend it's a Tesla. I don't know how, but that's why. And also, on her pattern, she does have some patterns that look like the letter T. I don't know if you can even see them. I'll try to find a more obvious one. There's one right there. Can you kind of see it? It's a T for Tesla. It's the Tesla logo on a snake. And also, he was $500, which actually isn't a ton of money to spend on, like, a fancy morph of ball python, considering ball pythons can go upwards of one, two, to $10,000. But for me, $500 is a good chunk of change to uh, spend on a snake that I'm not going to profit off of from breeding or anything. So 
This is Tesla, my ball python. He is uh, just a little baby, little baby boy. But yeah, I love ball pythons because they're super chill. Um, when I first got him, I believe he was on live, but he just immediately switched over to Frozen Thawed, like no issue. So I was super lucky with that. All of my snakes are on Frozen Thawed. He eats really, really well, and that's something I'm always nervous about if I'm ever getting a new ball python, because you never know if a ball python's gonna be a good eater or a picky eater, and so far Tesla has been a really good eater. So thank you, Tesla, for not giving me too much troubles. Um, you're doing great. So yeah, that is Tesla, my ball python. Let's move on to the next snake. So next up, we have Aphrodite. Aphrodite is my Brazilian rainbow boa. I believe she's a bit over a year old. She definitely is not full grown. She is a very long snake. So rainbow boas get their name from the reflection on their scales. I never know what to call it because um, I usually tend to call it iridescent, but then I think I get comments of people saying, no, it's not iridescent, it's chrome, or people saying it's holographic. I don't know if it's iridescent, holographic, or chrome. Someone needs to hit up Simply Neological and have her explain it to me what the difference is. But the point is, she has very reflective scales where you can kind of see like a rainbow pattern. I'm pretty sure it's just iridescence. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys will let me know. Aphrodite is a very pretty snake. These are one of my favorite types of snakes because their pattern, even without the rainbow sheem, sheem, shimmer, the rain, with, even without the rainbow-ness of their scales, I think they are very, very stunning with their pattern, their orangish color, and they have like those really cool circles on them. I think they're just super pretty snakes. They are very, very pretty. They are not good snakes for beginners, I will say though. So if you've never owned a snake before and you're like, wow, this is a pretty snake, I wouldn't recommend getting one because they are a little bit finicky with their humidity. They need a pretty high humidity to be maintained in their enclosure at all times. Otherwise, they can have respiratory issues, problems shedding, um, problems eating. So you wanna make sure that you have a good humidity for them. And not only that, but when they're young, they tend to be very nippy. She has bit me quite a few times when I was going in her enclosure to get her, and I've learned my lesson, and now I use a snake hook to get her out. And then once she's out of her enclosure, she is, as you can see, she's completely fine when she's out. But boas just tend to be a little bit more defensive, I have found in my experience at least, so, you want to kind of know how to handle snakes and stuff like that before you start getting into the more nippy species of snakes. But once they're more older and mature, they do mellow out a lot more. So yeah, that is Aphrodite, my Brazilian rainbow boa. Not to be confused with Colombian rainbow boas, which look completely different. Can you say goodbye to the camera? Okay. She doesn't speak English, so I'm just being silly. All right, so up next is one of my favorite snakes, which I feel like I say with every snake, but <laughs> her name is Opal, and she is a sunbeam snake. So sunbeam snakes are really, really unique because they aren't super common in the pet trade, but also because they have extremely stunning, again, iridescent, dare I say, scales. They just have these amazing, amazing scales with really, really pretty reflection. They are like one of the most iridescent snakes out there, I believe, but they are not super common in the pet trade. They aren't very desirable to keep as pets, and the reason for that is because they tend to live underground, and they thrive just in a tub basically full of dirt and you don't really get to see much of them. So essentially, keeping a sunbeam snake is like keeping a pet tub because it's literally just a tub full of substrate and they bury themselves and they only come out to eat, really. Sunbeam snakes are not the most exciting snakes to have as a pet, but aside from that, they are also very, very sensitive and a lot of people have trouble keeping them alive in captivity. They require very, very high humidity so um, they are very difficult to keep. I've had mine for almost a year, I believe, maybe already over a year. 
I guess I've just gotten very lucky maybe, or maybe I'm just a good snake keeper. I don't know. Take it as you will. But she has been doing very well. She eats about every week and a half to two weeks. And she is very, very calm. Sunbeam snakes are notorious for not enjoying being handled at all. They tend to get very, very stressed out when they're handled. And I, don't get me wrong, I don't handle mine barely at all. I pretty much only take her out when I'm cleaning her tub. But as you can see, she is very, very calm when I have her out. She moves very slowly. She doesn't really thrash around very much. She seems very okay with being handled, although I still wouldn't recommend handling them frequently at all because that can lead to stress and stress can lead to other issues. Again, I only handle mine when I'm taking her out to clean her tub, which I actually have to clean her tub right now, so it works out perfectly. Another interesting thing about sunbeam snakes is they actually don't bite for their main source of defense. They actually musk and for anyone who doesn't know what that means, it's basically a glorified word for peeing on you. Um, it's not technically peeing. They do, however, release a liquid that is more foul than pee, and that is their defense mechanism. But again, she is very calm when I handle her, and she's actually never musked on me, so I am super happy about that. And uh, sunbeam snakes are from southeastern Asia. So yeah, that is Opal, and she, again, is my sunbeam snake. I'm going to just show you guys a close-up. That's a close-up of her scales. I have no idea how well her scales are showing up on camera, but if they look anything like they do in real life, then it is absolutely insane. She looks like a worm. She's just a big gold worm. She's literally a big worm. She looks like a worm, and she's just in the dirt all day. So yeah, that's Opal. Say goodbye to Opal. Goodbye, Opal. You ready to go back to your tub? Oh, she's so pretty. She's literally one of my favorites. Wow. Snakes make me so happy. If you don't like snakes, then I am so sorry. They make me, they just, they're just little joy noodles. I just love them. I, okay, I need to go. I gotta go. Next up, we have Monty, my ball python. For anyone who has been on my channel for a while now, you guys have seen Monty ever since my like second or third video I've ever posted. Monty is the very first snake that I ever got. I think I got him when I was 18. So he's around four or five years old now, I think closer to five years old. And he is a normal ball python and he is pretty much full grown. Snakes don't technically ever stop growing, fun fact. They always kind of grow throughout their life. They just hit a growth spurt when they're younger, and then their growing slows down a lot more. But he is pretty much full grown. He is a male ball python, and he is not going to get a whole lot bigger than this. This is pretty much as big as a male ball python is going to get. So I'll try to kind of extend him so you can see better. I can't really fit him into frame very easily, but he is a pretty big snake. My second biggest snake as of right now. He is a thick boy. He is just the nicest snake ever. He has never struck at me, never tried to bite me. He would never hurt a soul. And he's not even really like head shy. You can pet his head. Usually ball pythons would like do this when you try to pet their head, but he just does not care. He's the chillest ball python ever. He is so cute. Look at his little face. Next up, we have my red tail boa, who is not the nicest noodle in the world. And I'll explain that once I get her out. <laughs> All right, so over here we have Athena, and Athena <laughs> is my Colombian red tail boa. Athena is a BCI red tail boa. So I'm not gonna get a whole lot into it in this video, but there are two types of red tail boas. There's BCC and there's BCI. BCC stands for boa constrictor constrictor, and BCI stands for boa constrictor imperator. So basically the main difference has to do with the locality of the snakes, but BCC red tail boas tend to get a bit larger than BCI red tail boas. And there's also slight differences in the coloration and in the pattern of their scales. And um, she is decent sized and she is not full grown. She is still getting bigger as we speak, but 
She is going to stay a pretty manageable size. I got her because red tail boas are notoriously known to be pretty friendly snakes. And also because I did want to get a larger species of snake that wasn't going to get way too big for me to handle. Just to kind of get me used to larger snakes. Athena here has bitten me a few times. So uh, they definitely aren't like the nicest snakes in the world. They definitely aren't ball pythons by any standard. Athena tends to be a little bit more nippy. I believe when I'm trying to get her out of her enclosure, kind of like my Brazilian rainbow boa. So she is pretty friendly once I have her out, usually. Sometimes she's just in a mood where she doesn't want to be handled. So I can kind of tell by her body language when I'm getting her out. If she starts to get in a very defensive position, then I know that I shouldn't get her out right away because that's when I'm gonna get bit. Some snakes just tend to be a bit more territorial of their enclosure, so that's just something that you need to keep in mind when you're handling your snakes. So yeah, this is Athena, my Colombian red tail boa. She is just a normal, she is not any special morphs. Colombian red tail boas do come in a variety of different morphs, but she is just a normal one and she is absolutely beautiful and she has a mustache and I'm gonna show you her mustache because even though she's a big intimidating noodle, she has a stupid little mustache. Do you see her mustache? <laughs> so yeah, she has a mustache. She isn't all scary like she tries to make herself out to be. But yeah, she is actually very, very friendly and calm once she's out. I just find that she is a bit more defensive when I'm trying to get her out of her enclosure. They are not probably for a beginner snake keeper just because they do get relatively big. But overall, their care is relatively easy. You do need to give them a very decent sized enclosure because of their size. But they are amazing eaters. Almost never turns down a meal. So yeah, that is all of my snakes. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Once again, a huge thanks to Amino for sponsoring. Make sure to click link down below and download Amino. Join the reptile community and follow me. My name is Tyler Ruggy on Amino. Yeah, that was all of my pet snakes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to comment down below what snakes you guys have. I love hearing about your guys' animals and I would love to know what kind of snakes you have. Does anyone out there have more snakes than me? Because I'm jealous if you do. Where are you trying to go, Athena? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> I should stand back here so you can see how big she is. She is a large noodle. So yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. And I post videos every week with my animals. So if you guys like animals, then make sure to subscribe. I don't only have snakes. I have other things too, like lizards and birds and bunnies and dogs. So you definitely get the best of everything here on my channel. Um, except you don't get a likable human. You only get cute animals. I'm sorry. Anyways, subscribe. Follow me on all my social media links. Those will be linked down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Isn't that right, Athena? Athena, say goodbye to them. Say goodbye to the friends. She says, I'm leaving.